Welcome guys back to New Zealand Mysteries. I'm TJ. It's awesome that you're here if you're new. Hi, I'm TJ and welcome. I quickly am just going to go through a few, a few housekeeping things. I apologise about the audio and video quality. I am just using a cheap old laptop and it's microphone and like a free software. I intend to get uh, new equipment down the line, but it is what it is. All you need to know about us is in the description box below, links to our Facebook page, we'd love to have you there, links to our website where I have an extensive database of missing and unsolved murders from around New Zealand and some from around the world, and links to the sources I use are down there as well. I'd love it if you could support the channel, um, you could click the like button or the dislike button if you prefer. If you like the content, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell so you will know when new episodes are released. If you would like to support the channel uh, with a cup of coffee, you could buy me a coffee for $3 and the links for that are down below as well. It's a lot of work for one person and um, any help is greatly appreciated. I don't mean any harm in making this episode to the family. I'm going to talk about um, it's just a, raising a bit of awareness now this episode is going to have some mental health issues arise uh, so if you're sort of sensitive to that sort of thing then you need to miss this one and in this episode I'm definitely not mocking uh, the family involved I'm not mocking their mental illness if that's what it is it's just a bizarre mystery that I want to cover so really quickly, uh, there's a couple of things I need to clarify about previous episodes. So in the Jessica Poise episode, uh, her cousin Aaron commented below and clarified a couple of things for me. First, Dylan Sutton and Streff Stratton do not have the same surname. And I don't know why I thought they did, and they are not related. So that's cleared up. And the photo of her with a dog was not her own dog. Alice, but her ex-boyfriend's dog, Fade. Now, in the Clear Hills case, uh, someone clarified me, well, clarified the information in the comments below, saying the letter that was sent to Clear's family, saying they knew who the killer was, they were talking about William Mokaraka, which they thought he was a suspect at the beginning in 1998, but he was later cleared when DNA technology became available. So let's get started. Today we are going to talk about the bizarre mission uh, and road trip that this family, the Trump family, and from Australia undertook and it's a bit of a crazy story. If you don't know much about Australia, we're talking about this uh, bottom right hand corner here, the state of Victoria, uh, near Melbourne here and the New South Wales state which is here. Now, what I'm going to do is read out the first article while showing you this map. Otherwise, you're going to get completely befuddled like me. So, watch this map while I talk about it. We're going to first legacy.lawstreetmedia.com and it says, Bizarre Trump Family Road Trip Comes to an End. This was released on September the 7th, 2016 by Emma Zappel. When the police arrived at the Trump family home, they were confused. The front door was unlocked. Phone cards, uh, sorry, phones and credit cards were still there. Keys left in the ignition of the family's cars. Business papers were strewn around and a family was nowhere to be seen. The case that left Australian police bewildered may now be one step closer to an explanation as the father released a statement on Tuesday. Police Sergeant Mark Knight called it the most bizarre case that he had seen in 30 years. He said, we know the family was obviously traumatised by something, we just didn't know what it was. On Monday, the August 29th, Mark and Jacoba Tromp, which is the mum and dad, left their farm in Sylvan, a small town in Victoria, Australia, with their three adult children, Rihanna, Mitchell and Ella. They took one of the family cars on a road trip and ended up 825 kilometres away from Sylvan 
in Bathurst, New South Wales. It was supposed to be a technology free trip and although the son Mitchell bought his phone, he threw it out the window a half an hour into the drive. The next day, Mitchell left his family in a suburb of Bathurst and took the train back to Melbourne, where he talked to the police. He told them that his family had become increasingly paranoid and started to fear for their lives. The two sisters, Ella and Rihanna, stayed with their parents until later on the Tuesday. The family reached the Janolan Caves, where the two girls split up from their parents. They reportedly stole a car near the Janolan Caves and drove back to Goldburn, where they reported their parents missing. Keith Whitaker, a Goldburn resident, later found Rihanna in the back seat of his truck and called the police for help. So as you can gather, something strange seems to be going on already. This Keith Whitaker said, I turned around and saw two legs stretched across the back between my seat and the floor. She was lying on the floor, Whitaker told the Goldburn Post. I got an extreme shock. I pulled over in a rest area and about 20 minutes later, the young woman sat up and was staring straight ahead. I asked her who she was and if she was okay. She did not know her name and had no idea where she was. Ella kept driving south until she reached her home. On Wednesday night, a couple in Wangaratta claimed that someone who looked like Mark Tromp, the dad, was stalking them while they played Pokemon Go in their car. They said, I could barely see his headlights because he was that close to my car, the young man told the age. He said the man then got out of his car and briefly stood staring at the middle of the road before disappearing into the woods. On the Thursday, September the 1st, the mother, Jacoba Tromp, was found wandering around in Yass, a town outside Canberra. She was taken to a nearby hospital and was later transferred to the same facility as Rihanna and Goldburn, where she received psychiatric care. On Saturday, Mark Tronk was finally found walking the streets close to Warringatta Airport. Then on Tuesday, he released a statement apologising for his behaviour. In the statement, he said, In recent days, my family has been through a difficult period. We will soon be reunited together. I hope that we will begin to make sense of our ordeal and to return to normal life. More than anything, my family and I need time to recover and receive appropriate assistance, including mental health services. While there has not been any f official explanation for what happened or what caused an entire family to have what appears uh, to be a mental breakdown, speculation has ranged from drugs and environmental poisoning to a serious threat to their lives. News.com.au argues that this may be a case of a phenomenon called folie à deux. This syndrome, well it's called madness of two. The syndrome can be shared by two or more people in a close relationship, such as a married couple or family members. The affected fall into a spiral in which they reinforce each other's delusions, which increases in cases of social isolation. All family members worked at their berry farm seven days a week. Mark is now staying with his brother and the youngest daughter Ella has been charged with car theft and has a court date. That was of April 17. So I just wanted to go um, over that foley ado that uh, was mentioned in that last article. So Wikipedia says foley ado is shared psychosis or shared delusional disorder. It is a psychiatric syndrome in which symptoms of a delusional belief and sometimes hallucinations are transmitted from one individual to another. Recent psychiatric classifications refer to the syndrome as shared psychotic disorder and induced delusional disorder. Next we're going to nzherald.co.nz and this says Big Read, The Bizarre Disappearances of the Trump Family. Obviously there's a nice picture of their home. It emerged that daughter Rihanna Trump was found near Catatonic in the back of a stranger's ute. The 29 year old was found in the ute in Goldburn on Tuesday, the same day her family's lives began to unravel 
with her parents Mark and Jacoba Tromp going missing from a family getaway because of their increasingly bizarre behaviour. Rihanna Tromp was found in the back seat of Keith Whitaker's ute while he was driving after feeling a kick to the back of the driver's seat. He pulled over and called police. He said until the police arrived, she mostly sat and stared straight ahead as, as if she was catatonic. They arrived about an hour later and took her back to Goldburn Police Station. Mr Whitaker was telling the Goldburn Post. She was a well-dressed young woman and she offered to give me $50 for my trouble, but I said no thanks, I was just glad to help her. The police spokeswoman told news.com.au that Miss Tromp was taken to Goldburn Hospital where she is having mental health checks. Her mother, who was found agitated in Yass on Thursday, is also in the hospital undergoing similar checks. At this stage, Mark Tromp was still missing, but had reportedly been seen near Bega trying to hitchhike. Or Bega? Uh, police on Friday afternoon would say only they are following up every sighting. If accurate, it would be the first sighting of Mr Tromp, 51, since he was sought to have fled his car with the key still in the ignition after a bizarre incident in Wangaratta. He went missing along with his wife on Tuesday after the couple went on a trip to New South Wales with their three children. And the trip apparently was supposed to be to get a break from pressure they had been under. And that was from the son, Mitchell. Next, we're going to the newdaily.com.au. So that's a picture of Ella and Mitchell Trump. So Ella Trump has been charged with stealing a car just days after her missing father was found alive in Wangaratta, adding another bizarre chapter to the Trump family story. Ella's 29-year-old sister Rihanna, who remains in hospital after she was found in a catatonic state, was also charged with the vehicle theft, but the charges were dropped under a clause in the New South Wales Mental Health Act. Speaking to reporters last week, Mitchell Trump said his parents were scared and thought they were being followed when they decided to take the family on a road trip. Other reports suggested that Mark Trump feared someone was trying to kill him, while News Corp claimed the whole family, minus Mitchell, was suffering from a mental health condition that made him made them paranoid. Police have said the family was never in danger, nor did they have money or psychological problems. On Monday, Ella, 22, was charged with theft of a motor vehicle and possessing the proceeds of crime, which allegedly occurred on the road trip. It is alleged Ella Trump stole a car in Goulburn, New South Wales, and drove it back to Victoria after she split from her parents during the road trip, which began on August 29. Another bizarre coincidence um, in this story, another unusual fact about the case was that Mark, Mark Trump's brother, Ken, is a police sergeant in Monbulk and was helping the search for his sibling. And that Fairfax Media reported that Mark Trump ran away from the family two days after the road trip began in Wangaratta, but the day before that, the whole family had been in Bathurst. From Bathurst, Mitchell Trump left by train, and Rihanna and Ella drove the allegedly stolen car. On the same day, Rihanna Trump boarded a ute and was found hiding in the back of it at Lake George. On Thursday, Jacoba Trump, the mum, turned up in a Yass hospital. Rihanna Trump and her mother remain in hospital where they are being treated by health professionals. Ella Trump has been bailed and will face the Ringwood Magistrates Court in April. And so it can't find a date for the story, um, which does not help, actually. So next we're going to weeklytimesnow.com.au. And we have a video here from, I think it's Ella and Mitchell Trump. If it goes. Are you able to tell us sort of if there was anything that triggered this on the Monday? You mentioned, you sort of suggested there might have been something that sparked it all the other day. Yeah, there's a 
there's a few, there's nothing that I know um, for sure, but there is possible things, but um, I can't say at this stage because I don't know, To be, I'm not certain. Um, I believe the police are still looking into or investigating all the details. Yeah. Um, oh. Can you tell us how you came to actually get in the car on that Monday and start off on this trip? I think it's just... Sorry about this. My uh, computer's doing the function. Quite a confusing sugar. story. It is very confusing. I still feel confused. Um, it's... I think our state of minds wasn't in the best place. Um, and, yeah, I, it's, I don't even explain. know. Yeah. There's no bizarre, one reason for it. It's, yeah, bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> did, did you both feel that you were in danger at that moment when you left? No, I didn't feel Would in you? danger, but um, I just went, had, to, had to go with the family because I wanted to see where they were, they were going. Um, I couldn't leave them, but yeah, it was uh, it was tough to see your family like that, and I've never seen anyone like it. But the main thing is they're they're okay now. Um, everyone's safe, everyone's well, so we can just go back to to being to the family again. Yeah, yeah. back to normal. Yeah. <laughs> I apologise for a couple of hiccups in that video. I'm working on a pretty cheap laptop and it has its moments, that for, uh, for sure. Okay, the last article we're going to look at is from stuff.co.nz and it's got a short video and then some questions because there is some questions about what's been going on here, that's for sure. The bizarre mystery of the Australian family who went on an unexplained road trip has taken another twist. Daughter Ella Tromp has now been charged with stealing a car. Father Mark Tromp, the last of the family to be found, is tonight being looked after by relatives. Many questions remain about the family's strange interstate journey. Australia correspondent Ruth Wynne williams has more. Mark Tromp wasn't happy to be picked up after five days on the run. But what the father of four thought he was running from and why has left authorities and even those closest to him stumped. There's nothing that I know um, for sure, but there's possible things. I think our state of minds wasn't in the best place. A week ago, the 51-year-old Victorian berry farmer and his wife Jacoba dropped everything, hustled their three adult children into a car, fled their home in Sylvan, east of Melbourne, and took off towards New South Wales. I wanted to see where they were, they were going. The next day, Mitchell, who'd been forced to throw his mobile phone out the car window, left the group near Bathurst and made his way back to Melbourne. Later that day, sisters Rihanna and Ella would also leave. Ella made it home, but Rihanna was found in a catatonic state on the side of a Goulburn Road, more than two hours southwest of Sydney. By Wednesday, the family's car was found abandoned in Wangaratta. On Thursday, a dazed Jacoba Tromp was taken to hospital after being spotted by a passerby. But it took two more days before Father Mark was picked up, wandering near Wangaratta Airport. He's now in the care of relatives and has spoken with his kids. Police are considering the possibility the whole family was suffering from a psychotic episode which left them fearing for their lives. Mrs. Trump and daughter Rihanna are now in psychiatric care. Mark Trump's children are calling the whole bizarre journey a family matter and say their father will soon return home. Ruth Wynne Williams, One New Sydney. I think one of the scariest uh, things that came from the story so far uh, is that it no one seems to know what happened. Like, even the family themselves can't understand what they did. And that's kind of scary. Um, does it mean that, you know, this Australian family looked like a perfect family? They had no psychiatric issues. They were just under a little bit of stress with financial issues. Um, does that mean that can happen to anybody that's so stressed out and under so much pressure that they can go into this mental health episode? 
So let's ask some other questions. Now, the Trumps, I just wanted to give you the ages. There was five members of the family. Mark, the dad, 51. Jacob, uh, Jacoba Trump, 53. And their children, Rihanna, 29. Mitchell, 25. And Ella, 22. So, why were the Trumps behaving so erratically? Mitchell has since described a build-up of pressure within the family. It slowly got worse as the days went by. They were just fearing for their lives and then we decided to flee, he said. Apparently the Trumps were stressed over finances and fearful that someone was coming after them. The family's businesses were doing well and there was no indication someone was trying to steal their money. So it says their businesses were doing well, so I don't know why they were stressed over finances. While there was no diagnosed mental health problems or drug issues amongst the Trumps, reports suggest the bizarre behaviour was a mental health episode. A spokesperson for New South Wales Police said it might have been shared delusional schizophrenia. Whether it was this delusional schizophrenia or the other fully ado, um, it's still a bit of a mystery and quite scary. Uh, it would appear it affected everyone except Mitchell, who disputed the officer's claim. Although Mitchell went with them, so uh, you know he says that he wasn't in this disorder or suffering from this this folly ado thing, but he did go with them and he did chuck his phone out the window, so he was going along some of it anyway. Why did Ella and Rihanna separate? If this was shared mental health episode, it would seem Ella was also less affected than her parents and her sister. She explained that she left her parents because she was confused and just wanted to get home and feed my horses. But it isn't clear why the daughters split up in Goulburn and how Rihanna ended up in the back of a local man's ute. Next question, were Mark and Jacoba heading home and why did Jacoba travel north again to Yass? Mark and Jacoba were then sighted a day later in Wangaratta, much closer to their home in Sylvan. After the children had left them, why did they turn around and head south? Jacoba split from Mark and then headed north again to Yass on public transport. Why did she leave Mark and backtrack? Another question, was Mark stalking that couple and did he commit a break-in? In a display of distressing behaviour, a couple were stalked by an unidentified driver of Ella's silver Peugeot, who then took off on foot. Was this Mark? And if it was, why was he following this couple? And he was behaving really weirdly. There was also a reported break-in of a motel room in the area, and the culprit may have spent the night. Was this Mark? So... A lot of questions that nobody seems to be able to answer. Even the Trump family themselves don't know what happened. So there's heaps and heaps of articles on the internet uh, to have a look at. I'll list the ones that I've used below in the uh, box, in the description box below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you next time.